And though she screamed and begged, the children sat by the oven until her screams had stilled, and the witch was cooked. And then, because even children can't survive on sweets, they divided up the body of the old witch and ate her. What? usual at all. I used to read it to Callum when the electricity was shut off. Those poor children. The whole world against them. The forest. The birds. The old witch. Even their own parents. I used to imagine that Callum and I were the kids in that story. Not mother and son, but brother and sister. Hand in hand against the unkind world. We were always hungry. Looking for our own house made of candy. Looking for the sweetness that could take the pain away. Hunger leads people to desperate, terrible places where the tree branches reach like claws. Come out, sweetie! I'm not playing anymore, Callum. Another accident. This place. Despite the constant interruptions to work, Atlantic Island Park will be opening in time. Governor is booked to cut the ribbons, so the only real question is whether we will have any customers. Not truly worried, the customers will come out of simple curiosity. I deduce what was needed from the band of writings of Archie Henderson. For it's astonishing to think it's astonishing to think that a resonance of positive emotions can be used to fuel such a process. Henderson himself chose to use negative, and that cause of the taint still lingers in this place. I will not make his mistakes. Very soon I will know if this is all been for nothing. Stay where you are! Is that not his teddy in here? Probably not. It's a knife in his eye. This isn't a game, Callum! Callum, tell mommy where you are. This way. Where are you? Mother Dutch said quack, 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 quack. Callum, where'd you go? This way, mommy. This old thing used to make the blood run to my head. It used to make me dizzy. The guy just snapped. Those poor kids.
for me, Callum. <laughs> Where did you go? Oh, I remember this. Don't hide from me, Callum! I can't get on while it's moving. I can't get on while it's moving. I can't get on while it's moving. Interesting, man. Frustrated by the fact that the plans seem incomplete. I know as well as anybody that the rules of the game can be changed with enough money, but no matter how much money it talks, you can't conjure up missing plans from thin air. I tried, con I tried contacting the organization who sold me these plans, and they are stonewall on me. Every contact that I had, every meeting place that I have had watched, are swept bare. I have a sinking feeling that I have been swindled. I have gone ahead with what we could find in the plans regardless. The harvesting machines, the transport mechanisms, etc. Probably let, I'll probably let Nicholas name them something cute for the day we open the park. They will be rides after all. Can't go across that way apparently. Callum? This way, mommy. Treachery hides in thoughts. Treachery that lashes like a whip and scars our insides. The first time I saw Callum, my thoughts betrayed me. I looked down at this wrinkled, red, bawling thing and I thought, is that it? We build our world from expectations and the world that I had built for Callum was no different. He was so real, so there, and so far from my expectations. And they shattered. And as they fell in pieces, that one treacherous thought became a new foundation. All of the love that we shared, all of the warmth and goodness that followed, built on a single traitorous thought. I 
thought working in the park for summer would be a lot of fun, but the end of season here really drags. There aren't many tourists around, so most of the staff spend their days standing around gossiping. Most of that gossip is about Chad. I mean, Steve. See? You and I'm starting to call him Chad, and I went to school with the guy. It's a goddamn suit. It's the, in the beginning, it was a laugh. Steve, the local plush, is Chad the Chipmunk. Child-friendly mascot. It's Chad the Chipmunk, the child-friendly mascot at Atlantic Island Park. Mock of your daughters and all of that. But the more he wears the suit, the weirder Steve's getting. At first, it was little things like refusing to change out of the suit at work and taking it home with him every day. But then I saw him at Susie's Diner still wearing it, and it wasn't even a work day. Some of the staff complained discreetly to park management about the smell, and I saw him walking and talking with Mr. Winter, the owner, one day. And things seem to have changed. The suit still smells like a carcass whenever Steve walks by. And apparently, Steve has picked up some new skills since the last time I saw him. Puking up in a gutter outside the cycle oil station. Because he sure as hell can carve a mean ice sculpture. Those shapes he makes in the ice, though, they give me the creeps. Steve came by the booth today, lucky me, and just hung around for a while. I couldn't really tell because of the suit, but it seemed like he was staring at me, sizing me up, whatever he was doing. I asked him what he wanted, and he just stood there, not saying anything. Eventually, I called my supervisor. Jack came by, Steve wandered off. My supervisor told me to put everything in writing, so here it is. Also, I quit. I don't want to see that chipmunk ever again. Come back. Callum, come back here right now. <laughs> Wait, Callum! Constant crashes in 80s music. Guess it floats someone's boat. Where are you? Where'd you go? 